Welcome to the talk about um, CTF, Capture the Flag. These two are from the kit team for uh, CTF, and they'll talk a bit about it, because they also organize it here at the GPN. Please, an applause. Thank you. Cool to see so many of you here. Um, yes, we want to t tell you about Capture the Flag, which, are comp which is competitive hacking as a team sport. And um, who are we? We are um, Martin and Liam. We're both studying at, um, we are both in the Kit CTF team and both studying at uh, KIT, computer science. And yeah, as part of intros, we do development and security research work. Um, so, who here has heard about CTFs before? We don't mean these CTFs. Um, also, of course, not these CTFs. So quick show of hands. Who here uh, has heard? Oh, that, uh, that, that's quite a few. Um, still, this is an introductory talk. Um, so what are CTFs in just a few bullet points? Um, so at their core, these are competitions where it's about finding and exploiting security vulnerabilities. Um, these are organized in multiple challenges containing intentionally vulnerable software, so someone placed a, an issue there and you have to exploit it. As the title of the talk suggests, this is a team competition and uh, most of the time they run during a weekend. For example, this weekend um, it's uh, GPN CTF. And you can always check upcoming CTFs at ctftime.org. Um, so what are these flags we're talking about? Um, when you then get to exploit the vulnerable software or break some cipher, you will always end up with a recognizable um, string, which is this thing here down, uh, down here. And, if you, and you can then just take this one and uh, submit it at the contest sites, get some point for it, and climb the, le the leaderboard a few spots. Oh wait, what are CTFs not? It's not at all uh, illegal or malicious hacking. It's also not just taking known exploits, known vulnerabilities where there already exists some Metasploit module and just applying it. Um, and it's also not just brute forcing some password. Um, these challenges are organized in like big four categories, and Martin will tell you more about these categories. Yes, uh, as Liam has already said, no CTF, uh, no two CTFs are, are similar, and there is no no rule book about what's uh, a valid CTF challenge or what's a valid uh, CTF category, but. Uh, over the time, there has there have been four big categories that are that are pretty much present at, at every CTF uh, event. Uh, the first category uh, I want to talk about is binary exploitation, and binary exploitation is uh, about exploiting vulnerabilities in uh, applications written in compiled languages. Um, Still, nowadays, most of these challenges are uh, about exploiting memory corruption issues in C and C++ binaries. Uh, these issues are still pretty relevant in, in IT security today, so that's why we still find them in, uh, in, in challenges. And also, uh, while the, the underlying issue uh, is, is quite old, there's, this still is, is an evolving field with, with new uh, mitigations coming up and new bypasses for these mitigations being developed. Um, so, yeah. Uh, of course, there are also challenges about exploiting uh, uh, other things. Uh, to, uh, for example, nowadays we have a lot of uh, just-in-time compiler bug exploitation in, in JavaScript engines, for example. Uh, this would be an example for a more, more complex binary exploitation challenge. Uh, the second big field is uh, reverse engineering. Reverse engineering is about uh, understanding a piece of software that you were given as part of the challenge. And there, you're mostly not giving source code to this challenge, so you just get a compiled artifact that might be stripped and optimized by the compiler, so it's, it's pretty hard to, to understand what's going on there. Um, but usually, you attack these kind of challenges by using a decompiler, disassembler, um, or some dynamic analysis tool like a debugger, and try to understand what the software is, is, is doing. Um, here, we also find a lot of C and C++ binaries, because these are kind of 
approachable for, for, for these, these kind of things. And also there's a lot of, of, of tooling because these, these languages are, are standard for a long time. Uh, but we also find, uh, find challenges, use, challenges to use newer languages like Go or Rust, but yeah, there's less tooling for, for, for reversing these, so yeah, it, it can be a bit of a pain. But we also find exotic challenges in this category. Uh, like uh, a lot of times people implement custom CPU architectures and compile binaries for these. Um, so then you have to exploit or understand some, some application that was written for an architecture where no tooling is present for, for reversing it. And super obscure stuff like recently there was a CTF challenge where someone implemented a Rubik's Cube-based maze as part of a LaTeX document. So this is an example for a reverse engineering challenge where you were given source code because LaTeX is not a compiled language, but still understanding what's, what going, on, uh, what's going on is not a trivial effort uh, there. Uh, another big category is cryptography. We used to call it just crypto, but nowadays uh, that's confusing people because they think about uh, blockchains. Um, crypto is mostly about, uh, crypto is about attacking cryptographic protocols, uh, both like known standard protocols like uh, RSA, elliptic curve, or, or block ciphers. Um, in, mo in, in many cases, these uh, uh, algorithms are just implemented wrongly, so you can attack the implementation or the author misuse them. But uh, that's not all. There are also a lot of challenges this route, uh, that are based on, on cutting-edge crypto research. Uh, you have a lot of challenges that uh, are based on post-quantum cryptography, things like lattices. Um, yeah, so heavy, heavy math stuff. So, yeah. And uh, Liam also always said, I'm too excited about this category because that's where I spend most of my time. Um, but yeah, there's web hacking. <laughs> Uh, and web hacking is anything that involves HTTP or web browser, or at least that's how I classify it. Um, here you find a lot of uh, challenges that are based on the OVASP top 10 list that you have may have heard about. There you'll find uh, the classical web security issues like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, other kinds of injections. Um, yeah, but also on the, on the more difficult side of challenges, there are a lot of challenges that are based on newer browser APIs Pretty much always, if, if some, with Chrome ships a new API that's vaguely security related, there will be CTF challenges about it uh, quickly after. Okay, um, now we've talked a lot about what CTFs are, where you can play them, how you play them, what the categories are, but we wanted to, to give you an example of how solving a CTF challenge can, can look like, and turning this into a demo isn't really trivial because we have a 30 minute slot, Solving CTF challenges can take a lot of time, and it usually does take a lot of time, so you can spend a few minutes on a challenge, but you can easily spend tens of hours on, on solving a CTF challenge. Um, so in this demo, I will try to, to show you everything else and spend as little time as possible on the actual hacking so you will understand everything else. So this is, this is demo time, light. So as we have already said previously, we are running uh, GPN CTF this weekend. Uh, so this is the website of, of, of the GP, uh, GPN CTF. You will get it, well, I can see the URL up there, but we'll show it, show it again later. And what I'm doing now is something that's normally pretty problematic. So I'm going to solve one of these challenges that I already know the, the solution to and show it to you while the event is still running. Normally this is strictly prohibited and don't do it, but yeah, since we are organizing it, this was all planned and coordinated, so hope, hope it's going to be fine. So what I'm going to show you is uh, solving the Rusty Web Challenge. Uh, we can yeah, just pick any challenge on the, on the website. Uh, here we have a, have, a, have a description for the challenge, some information about connecting to the remote instance, and we can download some, some source code. I already downloaded the source code here and extracted uh, the archive. So as I said, I already know the, the solution to this challenge, but uh, I'm going to walk you through the steps that are usually involved in solving some such a challenge. Um, first thing first, we can look at the, at the provided files. We get um, a fake flag file, so of course the, the real flag is not just present in the, in the archive. Um, we get a Docker file, so we can run the challenge locally. I already did that as well. And then we get the source code of the actual challenge. And how you would usually go, go or approach this, maybe first have a look at what the challenge is actually doing. In this case, it's, it's running a Rust web server, seemingly. Um, 
So if you think about okay, Rust, uh, Rust Web Server, where could we could we try to to attack this? Um, I think Core Server is a file that you probably would have a look on pretty look at pretty early on. Um, and of course, this is this is fast forward, but you see okay, there's a method that's handling connections. Uh, it's having a look at the at the used uh, HTTP method, and it's parsing the the URI, the URL we are requesting. And then there's this line that may look suspicious if you have some experience with web security. Of course, what's happening here is the web server is uh, constructing the file path that it's, uh, it's going to read and return to the user. So it does this by compiling the static document root where all the web server related files are located and concatenating the URI path V as a user requested. So, for example, if we try to load index.html, this is going to be uh, slash var slash www index.html, and this gets returned to the user. Now, the problem here is that if you try sending something like this as a URI, the concatenation of the two would be, would be this, which is still fine, okay, index.html, uh, but if we send this, this is equivalent to just slash flag which is a path that does not lay within the original document root, so we just trick the web server into returning any file uh, from, the, from, the, from the server. Uh, in, in a real-world scenario, you could do something like this to, to leak etc password or any, any credential. So, okay, after we found the bug, probably in a, in a bit more time than in this, in this demo, we, we have to exploit it, because CTF is also about exploiting issues. So, um, we can do this using using curl. Um, the only thing you have to know is the handy uh, as is flag to prevent curl from already resolving these um, these dot dot slash uh, directory traversal thingies. <laughs> uh, so first we try to exploit the local instance we already have have running. No, that's all that is needed for, for this example, and we get the local uh, fake flag. Now, the next step is to, to get the actual real flag. So if we return to the challenge website and connect to the provided uh, endpoint here. No? It's not my laptop. So uh, in this case, we have to solve a uh, Proof of work puzzle to prevent people from just spamming our infrastructure with, with requests. Hmm? Okay. Uh, live demo. Awesome. Okay. I hope this won't take too long. Okay. Uh, <coughs> send this to the remote. And luckily, the queue is empty, and we don't have to wait for five minutes here. Okay, now uh, we got a, a URL where the same Rust web server is running, but on our GPN CTF infrastructure, where there is no fake flag file, but the actual flag. So we have to, to run the same exploit against this instance. And we get a real flag. So now the last step in, in the CTF process is to submit a flag. So we get, get some points uh, for our team. Let's place it here. Correct. Now we, we solved our first CTF challenge. Uh, and with that, uh, Liam, will Liam will take us a bit more about more complex and more interesting challenges. <laughs> OK. These challenges can uh, cover a very broad spectrum. Um, they start by these uh, little introductory challenges, but actually go as far as pushing the state of the art of like uh, things like browser exploitation or kernel exploitation. To give you a bit of a feeling for that, I want to get, get, give you the, the high-level conceptually overview of another challenge from last year's HitCon CTF. You had to start by exploiting Chrome's V8 engine. Then you had to break out of the sandbox, um, have a, and then exploit the Linux kernel. And this whole thing was running in a um, virtual box um, 
and you also had to break out of there. Mm, yes, um, and, and you got, got extra points for um, doing this in one exploit, as a, and that's why it's called for chain as a full chain. And this is an instance of taking popular open, soft, uh, open source software and introducing some bugs, where it's then uh, some intentional bugs that are, for example, in, 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 in this example, not dissimilar from things that actually happened in the real world. Um, but um, it could also be that it's just uh, specifically crafted software for the, the CTF. Um, one thing that is kind of a meme by now is these, these simple note-taking apps. Um, and the, the meme goes like, um, if some IT security professional finds some actual interesting bugs in, bug in some customer software, but they are not allowed to publicly talk about that bug because it's not customer software, um, they re-implement this bug in a simple note-taking app and it uh, ends up in a CTF. Um, also for completeness, there um, sometimes is also just unmodified um, software and then it's called clone and pwn. Mm, okay, cool. But, but why, why do this? Um, we can all only answer the question of why are we doing this? And obviously it's fun. To be honest, it's also very frustrating at times because you don't always walk in a straight line um, through the solution. There's a lot of trial and error and failing involved, but after that it's even more fun if you, if you solve it. Um, you learn a lot. Um, you sometimes have to, you're, you're not expected to know every technique or every technology that is present in a CTF, but you're um, m more expected to just read up on that on, on a weekend, so you, you learn a lot fast. Um, you meet cool people, um, both in your team as well as um, from the other teams, and we'll talk about this a bit more later. And all companies want to hire you, obviously. Um, but that shouldn't be the main motivation why you do anything. Uh, okay, cool. Um, but how? Um, how to get started with, with all of this? Um, and the answer to this is just play these CTFs. Um, choose a CTF that features some beginner-friendly challenges. For example, this weekend at GPN CTF, we have challenges that, that are specifically designed for beginners that have hints in them to get you started. And there are also, also other CTFs like Piku CTF or uh, CSCG. And um, just try to solve them. And if you don't manage to solve them, that's not, not a problem at all because after the CTF, there will be write-ups published, most likely, by other teams who solved it, and you can learn from it, and it's much better to learn from it um, if you try it than just to read the write-up. Mm. And following that theme, uh, just join your local or online CTF team. For example, um, we here at KidCTF have uh, weekly meetings where we discuss topic, topics like the challenge categories we, we, we just shown you. And the rest of the slide is not here to overwhelm you, but to serve as a reference. If you look at the slides again, these are just resources um, that we found valuable in, in learning certain techniques. So I just won't read all of this, but it's here. Okay, Martin will tell us more about the cool people we meet. Um, yeah, so you may ask yourself, Okay, who is spending the times in front of the computer the entire weekend? Okay, maybe not here people are asking themselves that, but um, yeah, who, who are these people that are playing CTFs? And of course, uh, CTF is, it's not a small, small sport, or, uh, depends on what you compare it to, but uh, there are a lot of people playing CTFs, and so we can't answer that in a, in a general way. Um, what we can say is, that there are a lot of, of uh, academic teams. Uh, so, for example, Kids ATF is, is based at KIT. We also have, have non-academic people or non-students uh, in, uh, in our team. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of, of teams that are originally based uh, at, some, at some university. Then there are teams that are primarily uh, based on, or that primarily uh, persist of people that work at the same company. Um, so, for example, Google used to have I think used to have a big CTF team with Google security researchers. Um, so that's, that's, some, uh, that's uh, one, one group of, of teams. 
And also there, is, uh, there are merger teams, and I think they are especially interesting for the, for the community aspect, especially for big international uh, competitions. Uh, teams merge together to form, form bigger teams and increase their, their odds of, of winning. And uh, this is also one cool way to meet other people even outside of your local CTF team because you play this, these CTFs together with, with other people um, yeah, who, who also have, have good ideas and know, know a lot about uh, yeah, exploiting stuff. Um, so, yeah. This is this is uh, a rough overview. Um, now that we know who's who's playing these events, it may be interesting who's organizing them. Um, most CTF events are just organized by by CTF teams. So we have big, uh, mostly yearly events like uh, Hikes Pay CTF, uh, Plate CTF, Alles CTF, who are run by by these teams. Um, we have some CTFs that are organized by, by companies, so there's a yearly Google CTF and Real World CTF, or really big and successful uh, CTF events. Um, and these are mostly online events, so you can join from wherever you are. Um, there are also some CTFs that are part of conferences. Uh, so I think the biggest is the DEF CON CTF at the DEF CON conference in, in Las Vegas. Um, there's HitCon CTF, also part of HitCon conference. There's the CCC CTF at the, at the Congress. And of course, GPN CTF here at, at GPN. And these uh, CTFs are cool because, of course, you can meet people in person, uh, also from, from other teams. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's already it. Uh, I think uh, that's, that's all we wanted, uh, wanted to tell you today. Um, I hope we could motivate some of you to, to have a look at, at CTFs and uh, try, try your own, own luck. Um, so, of course, the, the most important takeaway here is uh, go play GPN CTF. As Liam already said, we have beginner-friendly questions, uh, questions uh, challenges from most categories. Um, we already mentioned it in the in the far plan, so we are trying to do some kind of team matchmaking service. So if you think, okay, CTF sounds cool, but I want to play with someone else, raise your hand now and look around. <laughs> so we're going to give you a bit of time so you can actually try to remember who here else is raising their hand. Okay, <laughs> let's see how, how well this works. Uh, and of course, uh, Bit, bit of Q&A, I think we have plenty of time probably. Yeah, a bit of time. Um, yeah, and uh, otherwise just ask us if you see us here at, at GPN. Um, GPN CTF maybe is uh, still running till tomorrow evening, so more than 24 hours, enough time. And of course you can just contact us via email or matrix. Okay. Are there any questions? Hi, uh, first, thank you. Cool. Um, is there a limit of the team members in these uh, challenges and these events? So I think when Google, with this huge amount of people, of very high qualified people, it's kind of unfair against a t team of five or six students, at least from my point of view. Um, there are some uh, CTFs that have a team member limitation, but most of them actually don't, mainly also because it's hard to enforce. Also, um, we, we've seen these big merger teams and these, these growing teams, and we're also part of, um, part of one. But what you actually can observe is that it doesn't scale linearly. It's, it's a lot of communication, and it's much more about the, how, how in-depth are, you, are your players. So, the, so there are some with and some without. Um, I think I saw a question in the back there. Or, or there? In the front. Thanks for the talk. Um, I only read about the Necromancer v uh, virtual machine. I guess that's also a CTF, but it's not intended to be a team CTF. Is that correct? Have you heard I about that one specifically? Not about that Maybe I heard the name. Um, so, so I can just 
I, I can't tell you about this specifically. I could uh, tell you in general there are some um, CTFs like CSCG, which are solo events, so um, without teams. Um, and what th there's also, if you say virtual machines, it might be like a crack me. Crack me is a related topic to CTFs, wh which are mostly m more long longer running. It's not a, a, a time box competition, but it's like th they are always, and you can just try your luck, and maybe the this one is is a solo thing. But I can just speculate. Uh, Uh, hello. Do you have some uh, recommendations for some interesting tools? For example, I guess that everyone knows CyberChef, for example, but uh, do you have some lesser known tools that you can recommend which are useful? I think it's, it's hard to give a general answer on that because, like as you said, there are a lot of different challenge categories and I think most tools are especially useful for, for a single category, so for example, if you do uh, reverse engineering, I think you're going to use something like uh, Ghidra or, or either Pro or some reverse engineering tools. Um, I don't know of... Maybe, maybe a follow-up on that. Um, so, yes, the, um, their Cyberchef is cool and it's like for its own category. Um, then there are decompilers and, and then there's like a, a bit of software that makes decompilers better, like connecting it with... Uh, Debugging, uh, debug to sync is one lesser known tool. I'm not sure if you heard about Pwn tools before. It's what, what we use like day to day to interact with servers and, and um, kind of solve these binary exploitation challenges. But yeah, it's, it's hard to give a comprehensive list of all these lesser known tool, tools. Oftentimes you just find a GitHub repository with like four stars and it actually does disassemble this old architecture that you're looking at. So yeah. Maybe a bit of an unsatisfying answer there. What about tools like ChatGPT? Can I use that? Is that forbidden or? <laughs> so, generally speaking, there is there are very little things that are forbidden at CTFs. Uh, so things like sharing flags and or actually communicating with other teams about solutions that's that's a big big no no. But Tool-wise, I think everything you can use, you are allowed to use. So ChatGPT, uh, ChatGPT is, is is fine, um, and I think there are some uh, people are using it, and it's especially interesting. It is kind of helpful in the reverse engineering context sometimes because it uh, can. It seems to understand what some assembler code is doing and can give you high-level uh, ideas about about it. Um, but yeah, you can you can use pretty much everything. Are there any other questions? If not, then uh, thank you for this talk, not only for this talk, but also for organizing the CTF right here at GPN. And a last round of applause for Martin and Lyon. <laughs>